So this is the Google Pixel 6, is the new Google Pixel phone. And I've had it for a few months now and I've been taking a few pictures with it, mainly of the family and little sprogs and stuff like that. And it's come out pretty, pretty good. Now, obviously its main competitor is the iPhone 13, which my partner's got, which hopefully she will allow me to take out and do a comparison with it. But there are a few little functions on this that I want to try out in a POV today, which is the sort of not only to test the 50 megapixel camera, which this thing boasts, but it's also got a panning function and also a long exposure function, which I want to see how it compares to what you would normally do with your DLSR. So let's pop out into the streets of London. I think I'm going to go to Trafalgar Square to begin with and have a nice little walk around there because it's quite a nice day. It's the only day in the week which is not supposed to rain. So hopefully it should all come out really, really nice. And yeah, let's uh, let's test out the new Google Pixel 6 phone. Right, so we are at a very busy Trafalgar Square today. It is half term in the UK, so there's obviously a lot of kids knocking around. It's a bit windy, so hopefully this won't affect my, uh, my sound that much. But we are here with the Google Pixel 6, and we're gonna take a few little shots the best way we can. And uh, let's sort of start off with a nice little classic one of Nelson's column just here. Some sensational clouds. Forming in the background. Got our exposure on the column itself. A bit like that. Now the nice thing about this area there are some lovely little classic shots that you can get some of the fountains and stuff. Let's see if we can get one with St. Martin's in the fields in the background. That's nice, I like that one. That one's really cool. So yeah, so we're gonna walk around to Falcon Square for a little bit. See what we uh, we can capture around here. Now there's a few little functions on this phone which I want to sort of test out as well because if you go into the motion section at the bottom, you've got a panning action and long exposure. So I'm gonna walk a little bit towards the roundabout in a second and see how good the phone is compared to you know you, your normal DSLR cameras and see what we can uh, sort of capture there. All right, so I've come around to the other fountain because this one here is actually shooting some water out of it. So I've zoomed into the Times 2 lens. We've got the National Gallery in the background as well. So we're going to focus on the actual fountain itself. Get the National Gallery in the background too. Let's have a look at that though. So it's nice and sharp that one is. You've got the water literally stopping in motion. But I'll tell you what, let's try it with the long exposure to see if we can get like a nice little trail on the water a little bit as well. So let's do that. Got to hold the phone still. Let's have a look at that one, shall we? That's pretty cool. I like that, that's very nice. Now sometimes on a reasonably sunny day you can get a nice reflection shot off the fountains as well. So I can see what we can do here. So I'm going to come down a little bit. So you can't really see much there, can you? So what I'm doing here is I'm going to try to get a bit of a long exposure to get the water to be nice and crisp. So holding that still. Let's have a look at that one, shall we? A little bit of motion blur with the guys in the background walking around as well. So that's pretty cool as well. So the light exposure is not too bad. Obviously, it's not going to be perfect. 
because it's an AI system in the phone that's sort of like, it sort of takes a long shutter and then it sort of like creates the photo within the AI system, within the chip in the phone itself. So it's doing quite a decent little job actually. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna try out the panning action. So I'm gonna come into the center of the roundabout just here and we're gonna see if we can get some nice panning shots of some of the vehicles panning, uh, going around the roundabout. Now, why I'm waiting for a decent subject to come around, I'm gonna come down here because there's a nice shot right here. All the way down Parliament Road to Big Ben just in the background. 4.8 times. So the zoom's actually really, really good. I'm gonna come across a little bit to get rid of that shot. Sure, I'm gonna wait for the traffic to sort of pan around a little bit. Nice empty shot like that. Oh, do you know, that's actually pretty good before the edit, really. That's, that's not too bad, actually. It's really nice. Come across a bit, get old Big Ben a little bit more central. As well. Wait for this bus to come past. That's not too bad, it's not too bad. So let's come around here now a little bit. We're gonna see if we can get a uh, a nice panning shot. Oh, around here would be pretty good actually. I like it around here. I'm gonna try to see if we can get like a cyclist by themselves, get like a nice panning shot going through. Right, so here we go, I'm gonna try this again. That's not too shabby, crop that in. There's a little bit of ghosting around the corner, so I don't know if I can fix that in post. We'll have another go at this location. It's gonna wait for another cyclist or somebody to sort of come past me. I'm gonna just get a little bit closer. Here we go, let's try this guy out here, look. If I actually got him in frame, that would have been not too bad. But I have to say, like, there's a little bit of sort of blurring around the actual subject itself. So I'm not overly convinced as yet. So when I go to my next location, which is going to be probably up by Piccadilly Circus, give it another go around there. It's a bit busy around here. and The traffic lights seem to be sort of against me. So we're going to have a couple more shots around Trafalgar Square and then we'll uh, we'll move on to our next location. Now I've got this shot just here and with the clouds over the top it is really really sort of epic. So I've gone into the uh, sort of the more wider angle lens and I'm going back in the camera trying to get a reasonably clear shot just in the front and I'm just going to take a couple here because there's also something else that I want to try out and this particular shot would actually work quite nicely with it it's coming a little bit more so we've got less empty space in the front just like that with the clouds overlooking it as well just like that. Let's go back into the normal frame camera. There we go. Oh, that's epic. Now, because what this also has, this particular phone, is that it has a AI system where you can actually erase people. So for that particular shot, when I've got a lot of people sort of walking 
in the forefront of the frame, I'm going to see how clever the camera, or the camera phone is to see how many they can actually erase. So you can get rid of some of the uh, the unwanted traffic as we walk past this uh, very talented singer. I'm going to come around here as well because there's a really cool shot just up here. A little bit similar to the one I did at the roundabout. It's just up here. Let's see if we can zoom in again. A little bit of splash of blue popping out there as well. Coming out through the sky. That's nice. So I've got in time six there, which is really, really close. That looks pretty good as well, actually. I quite like that. That's a good one. Right, let's see what else we can get. Right, so I've walked around to these steps just here. And you can get like a really nice little shot. Generally, I've maybe just saw one person walking up them. So we're going to go into here. And I'm going to bring this down a little bit. So I've got more of the steps in view. I wouldn't mind sort of like a, a clean shot with just maybe one person walking up them or walking down them. So about there, I'm going to sit here and wait for a bit. Maybe this guy will be by himself. Shot quickly. There we go. One, two. You come around here a little bit, try to get one single shot. Or someone just walking past this road here, like. That's the bell. I might try that with a bit of motion blow, actually, low exposure. See how quick someone walks past the actual shot itself. Got a look at that one. Oh, that's pretty cool. I like that. Right, let's go and see if we can find another cool little place where we can shoot summer photos. Right, so I've walked around the corner slightly. It's a little bit quiet around here, but I found this nice little door frame. So I'm going to see if I can get like a nice subject going in the center of the door frame itself. Hopefully on that side of the road. Which would be nice. Don't want too close to me. So again, it's just the, uh, the waiting game before you can get the shots. Which is, uh, sorry about street photography, if you're new to it, is there is a fair bit of waiting that you might have to do to get a particular shot, but sometimes the shot pulls off. Sometimes it doesn't, it's just, just the way it is. So we're just gonna hang out here for a bit, to see if I can get somebody just to walk through the frame. Ideally, just the one person, ideally. What I also liked with the steps when I had the long exposure, so I might also wait here a bit to get somebody walk through the frame and do a long exposure shot as well. But again, I'm gonna wait here a little bit and I'm gonna put the long exposure on. This is gentleman coming through the frame now. And I'm just gonna shoot it there. So that's a better shot already. It's just set up the long exposure bit. Now, the nice thing I like about this phone as well is that when you do one of the effects for long exposure, you get the actual shot for it. It was a shot that took within that split second, but you also get the really, really cool shot. I don't know if I can sort of see it. So you got that one there, which is the shot which I took. Then you got that one there, which is him walking through the frame, which is actually pretty cool as well. So I quite like both of them. And to be fair, that first shot as well was a lot better than the first one that I took. So I might stick with that one and get rid of the other one. But so far, I am quite chuffed with the images that are coming out of this phone. Now, with this as well, you've got the option to shoot RAW or JPEG 
I've chosen to shoot raw, and those are the files that are gonna be used to edit a little bit later on, because you know, if you do shoot, and you are a photographer, you know you can get more information from the raw photos, or from the raw uh, files, and we'll, uh, we'll work with them. Right, so I'm gonna walk down to Haymarket, and then up to Piccadilly Circus, and try to see if we can perfect this, uh, this panning shot with this particular phone. All right, so here we are up on Big D Circus. I'm gonna come up on these steps here because this little stretch just across here is generally the best place to try to get a pan and shot. So we're gonna go on to the pan and shot motion again. Again, I'm gonna to try to get like one particular subject to go across the frame, hopefully a cyclist. So I've come a little bit further down and I've gone to a wider frame. So I'm gonna try and get this cyclist now. Let's see if that's done it at all. That's worked a little bit. Got the uh, car in the background as well in focus. That's not too bad. So I'll see on screen if it's any good. Let's walk around a little bit more because we're gonna try a bit of light exposures on some of the, uh, the classic shots that you can get in Piccadilly Circus as well. So we're going to cross the road, we're going to go to the underground entrance just up here. Now I do like this entrance to the station because it's quite classic, so I'm going to come a little bit further down here, bend down a bit, get the uh, sort of frame going that way, to let these people just walk down the stairs. Bit of a leading line just there on the left hand side as well. So ideally, I want a bus to sort of come around this corner here, rather than going off in that direction. So here we go, so we've got a bus coming now. Hopefully we can get like an empty frame for the actual... tube stop itself. The bus is taking its time to come around the corner. Right, so that bus was extraordinarily slow. That's come out quite nice actually. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but that's come out quite nice. Quite like that one. Right, let's see if we can get this panning shot, see just how well. Did that one work? Well, that one worked. There we go. Oh, that one worked really, really well, actually. The one that's on screen now, this one I've just took. Literally had to turn this camera on pretty sharpish to grab hold of that one. I find it very difficult to get a bit of a, an empty shot at the moment, because it's, like I said, like it's very, very busy in, in the town centre at the moment. Well, I was, I was quite impressed with that last one. Try to get one more for comparison. And then maybe we might call that a day. So there we go, guys. Those were the shots. That is the Google Pixel 6. Now, I will say that I'm very happy with what the photographs have actually come out. Now, when I looked at the sort of like the images on the screen after I took the shot, it looks like that the Pixel did in fact do a little bit of a funky color grade, but I did also take the shots in RAW, which is what I have edited on my laptop. I didn't do the editing on the phone itself. I did put them into Lightroom and do them on the actual sort of Lightroom classic to sort of like produce the best photographs that I could. The light exposure function on this is really, really impressive, but the pan and shot, I wasn't entirely too sort of happy with. It looks like what it does, it's that it uses its AI function to go from the still snap to sort of realize what's the actual subject and then try to blur out the stuff around it to give the impression of motion blur. And it just it's not quite as a standard as what you would do handheld with your normal camera while you pan and try to take the shot itself. Also, with this quick little video that I'll show here, it's got the magic erase tool 
which is a little bit like content aware in the actual sort of Photoshop. So it sort of like judges the pixels around it and then tries to blur it out a little bit. It does sort of work, but it is not perfect again. This is obviously a new feature that has come into the Google Pixel. So they might need a few little tweaks in future versions of this phone. But overall, the camera is a very, very good camera, but it will be quite nice for me to actually go out and give it a good crack with the iPhone 13 as well, if I get a chance to take Fee out for maybe coffee and dinner out and about in London, which would be quite nice so I can compare the two. And if you are interested in seeing that type of video, please hit me up in the comments below. But guys, I think that is it for this particular video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up down there below. It really does help out the channel. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing because you know, the more the merrier. Let's let's get this party started. But until next time, guys, I'm gonna go and look after my children because she's literally right by the gate, sort of swaying at me. And uh, yeah, until next video, guys. Thank you. Bye.